Bundy's a very good working dog, bred to, to work with cattle or work on a farm in the outback. For what they've been bred for, they don't come much better than an Australian cattle dog or an Australian stumpy tail cattle dog. But for me, she works very hard in, as A, my assistance dog, B, as a therapy dog, and C, in the charity work we do. Tex is very well known in, in motorcycle circles. Back in the 70s, he uh, rode a 750 Honda all the way around Australia non-stop in six days and 23 hours, got himself in the Guinness Book of Records. And more recently, he's probably better known for his charity and fundraising work. Tex and Bundy have attended nearly every pink ribbon ride that I can remember. I've been on the committee since the very beginning, 11 years ago, and they've always attended. Bundy's job description is to put smiles on dials, bring happiness to people. With a leather jacket and the goggles on, it just adds that little bit more mystique, and uh, the, ch the children love it, you know, they just love it. Yeah. The ability that she has to go into work mode is very similar to the psychology used with a dog that's used for a blind person, that when their white harness goes on, they're in, in work mode. Bundy's equivalent is her glasses and her jacket. That's her motorbike. It's his job to steer it the direction that she would like to go, and it's his job to take her to her many adoring fans. If you told somebody that you saw a dog on a motorcycle travelling on the freeway at 100 kilometres an hour, and the thing's sitting there, they'd almost think, no, it's just not possible. Unless you see it with your own eyes, you just then can appreciate, I guess, what it is that they do, and yeah, that it's actually real. I couldn't handle if anything happened to Bundy, it'd probably finish me. Uh, um, she means a lot to me. Probably my darkest day in animal ownership occurred where I was outside with all my dogs and animals on our property. I was at work and uh, she was playing in the backyard of the farm on a back paddock with, with six other dogs. Chasing rabbits and anything else that popped up. Looked back over her over back to see where the other dogs were. Went straight into some long grass, into a ditch, lost her front legs, rolled over and smashed her back into a culvert and broke uh, T11 and T13 in her back. And she was paralysed. She was lying on the ground completely paralysed. When that accident happened, I thought, I've got this awesome dog that I love so much and her, her life's ruined and I'm going to have to put her down. Tough day. Tough day, because I knew that this was really bad. And no amount of training could change what had just happened. But she told me when she wanted to go back on the bike by coming down the garage one day when I was working on my bike. And I said, you want to go for a ride, don't you? And she, and she just looked at me and we, we put a gear on. And he took her for a ride around the block on her motorbike with those wobbly legs, because she asked and she gets what she wants. So that was the day I realised that Bundy could ride her bike again. And that we were only caretakers in her role on her bike and, and motorcycling and in the charity world and what she means to people. She's off to a new adventure every time she hops up on that bike and I think that's probably why she loves it so much. Some of the main uh, domains that young people are really primed for is novelty seeking, social engagement, creative exploration and experiencing their emotions intensely. This piece of paper is the person that we're going to bully. And I'm going to tell this piece of paper that I hate it, that it's ugly, that it's worthless, that I'm going to seriously hurt it when it's walking home from school. And I'm going to continue to beat and squash this piece of paper. And then I've realised, oh, this piece of paper's been hurt and I'm going to get into trouble for doing this. So I'm going to apologise and say I'm really, really sorry. And I'm going to unravel all of that hurt. This piece of paper will never be the same again. The marks, the creases, the folds, the rips, the holes, they will remain. Kids always pick on each other. That's why it is in our generation. I really hated high school. It wasn't the best time of my life. I don't look back on it with a lot of fond memories. I think when you're extremely anxious, that can often lead to very depressed thoughts and often suicidal ideation because you can become extremely overwhelmed. I have buried more young people than I can count on two hands and we see it frequently. 
fragmented families, broken down families, difficulties at school, social media issues, um, you know, what's going on online, bullying, drugs and alcohol. The majority of kids that we see that are self-harming, their parents and the wider community don't even know that they're self-harming. I used to do it pretty bad for a 14 year old, 15 year old. I've got scars up and down my arm and across my body uh, from self-harming and I'm not talking about you know these tiny little razor blade cuts, I'm talking about scars that are a centimetre wide and you know 12 centimetres long and cuts that, that deep uh, certainly show just what state I was in. We can lose some really amazing, talented people that could have accomplished great things and their life is ended before they ever get to do that, which is a shame. If you or someone you know is at risk, please call Lifeline on 13 11 14 or visit lifeline.org.au. This illegal wall today, don't have to worry about coppers, no charges, got permission. When you talk to someone about graffiti and street art, you, you've instantly got their attention. And so you already know, I mean, they may not like it or they may like it, but it's always going to be something that there's, a, there's an opinion about. So many characters. So many characters. I get a kick off, you know, I like doing dangerous things, but having fun too. You won't see 16-year-old Julian Neal's name on walls, but you can't miss his tag. Game, left like a calling card all over Sydney. Now graffiti, start off as a good thing. I still think it's a good thing, but it was just us against the system. The only way to do graffiti was, was illegally, and, and so that's how every, everybody did it. I always enjoyed painting with Julian. But Julian's been one of the guys that's just been consistent all the way from, from back then, you know. My parents were drug addicts, my mother was a prostitute. All I know about my father is he was Maltese, he was in SAS, and then he was a biker. So I found myself being in the motel rooms for like three days without seeing my mum and having to fend for myself. I got into drugs, I got into crime. A lot of people would see that really it's the role of a parent to stop their child breaking the law. That's a fundamental thing that a parent does. That's right. Some to the extent where it encourages the child to break the law. As writers, we were the only element in hip hop that could go to jail over what we did. Within the street art communities, there's a number of different groups. So there's the traditional old school uh, graph writers and that community, but then there are the newer artists that are moving in that want to participate and have a voice in the public domain. I never jumped a fence, I never stole paint, I never did any of that kind of cool criminal stuff that makes graffiti what it sort of is. I always wonder why the hell people do it, because most of it is indecipherable. You can't work out what it is. I think it's great. It's amazing art. It's good to see it in the street. It costs us a lot of money, though, because we've got to pay it off our own back. For a wall like this, probably about $300 involved. You reckon, Rob? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we beautify the area, and we get nothing for it. I think when you go into a community and there is no graph or there is graph in there, like you have to make it so that the community appreciate it, they acknowledge it and it's a part of them. So that's when communities will embrace graph, when they are included in the decisions of like where does the graph go, whose image or what does that message say. I'm interested in public space, I'm interested in the way we can make life more interesting in our cities and I see graffiti and street art as a part of that discussion about how we live in a more complex environment and we don't just see threat, we see surprise.